Good morning and welcome to today's Digital Devo number whatever it is in the midst of this season of physical distance and social responsibility. My name is Carla Gerard and I'm excited to share with you all today. If you'll open your Bible, eventually I'm going to get to Ephesians 5, but I'm going to start right now in 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. The ESV says this, This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Now, I know that we like to joke that I know a lot of songs, of scripture in song, but this is another one that I knew as a kid in a song, and it went, Walk in the light as he is in the light. Walk in, walk in. And we would be in a circle as kids or even youth, and we would walk around in a circle as we learned this particular scripture. Now, what does John mean in this passage? Our study guide says this, here John is making a contrast between darkness and light and the process of sanctification in the believer. Numerous times John indicates that darkness is passing away and the true light of salvation will shine in the believer. The light of salvation will shine bright in the believer, though John does not imply a sense of perfectionism or trusting in oneself for salvation. Instead, John points us to the work of Christ on the, on the cross. Excuse me and the blood of Jesus as the cleansing agent from sin. So it's important to remember just practically that darkness cannot exist in the presence of light. It can be dark as night in a room, but as soon as you even strike just a match or think about a flashlight or a larger candle or your phone flashlight and then all the way to flipping the light on, as soon as light is present, darkness has to flee. And that's how it is in the, in the life of the believer. Um, going on the study guide, it says this, John also gives guidance to test our knowledge of God and our relationship um, with God by our attitude towards sin. We cannot claim to have a relationship with God if we willfully continue to walk in darkness and sin. Walking is an active intention. It is a movement towards. It is a participation in. So we cannot walk in darkness if we are children of light. I love the study guide's point of this. The American church has created a come-as-you-are approach to the gospel where God accepts us as we are in our brokenness and failures. Yet, this is a distortion of the gospel, the good news of Jesus, where God does not accept us in our darkness and brokenness, but he purchases us, uh, he purchases us out of this darkness and cleanses us with the blood of Jesus. The true good news of the gospel is not that God loves us as we are, but that though we are, are sinners at our worst, Christ died to cleanse us from sin and transform our lives from darkness to light. The Christian life is, is a response and salvation of repentance, that we recognize that we have to repent, to turn from our sin, to face Jesus, to fix our eyes on him and trust his work on the cross that he has purchased the penalty of our sin. I'll close with this, this from Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. It says this in the word, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So we walk in the light and we walk in love. We walk in repentance and we preach the gospel to ourselves to remind us of who the light is and who Jesus is in our life. In this active thing of walking, this moving towards this participation in, it can be tiring, but it's seen when we make movement. This scripture tells us four things. We walk in love because Christ loved us. Christ gave himself up for us so we live an others-centered life. Christ was a fragrant offering, which is worship. And it was a sacrifice to God, which is what we do as a living sacrifice following him. So can we be imitators of God today? That's the challenge that Paul gives us in Ephesians 5. So let's walk in the light as he is in the light. And let's walk in love and forgiveness 
with one another. Let's pay attention to what's going on around us in the world. Let's listen more than we speak. And let's ask Christ to help us be like him. So glad you were with us today. This Sunday is Welcome Home Sunday, and we can hardly wait for all of us to be back together in this place as we are physically distanced and socially responsible. Will you join us this week on all platforms? We have an amazing lineup for digital connection. Look forward to seeing you soon. We love you and miss you very much.